Hey, horror fans, once again, it's the Horror Miser Money G here to do another movie review. And today we're going to review the movie The Summer of 84. Yes. <laughs> now, The Summer of 84 is a 2018 Canadian horror mystery film. Uh, it was directed by uh, Francois Sennard, uh, Arnuk Winsel, and Johan Karin Winsel. Yeah, so three guys to direct this film. <laughs> the film stars. Uh, uh, Graham Virtue, Judah Lewis, Caleb Emery, and Corey Gunther Andrew. <laughs> yeah, uh, it seems like we're getting more of these subgenre 80 nostalgia films, and this is the latest one that came out earlier. This came out actually came out earlier this year. Uh, I haven't got a chance to see it uh, last night, and uh, let's go on ahead and review the summer of 1984. <laughs> Now, it's the summer of 1984 in the county of Cape May, and we and uh, the town is plugged by a serial killer known as the Cape May Slayer. He's responsible for uh, disappearances of 13 teenage boys. Uh, and unfortunately, we find, come to find out that he could be somebody that's living in the cul-de-sac of this neighborhood uh, that where David Armstrong, who is the son of a publisher, along with his four friends. Uh, we have uh, Dale Woody Woodruff, Curtis Faraday, and Tommy Eats Eaton. <laughs> uh, Dale comes to suspect that the popular policeman, uh, David Mackey, uh, Wayne Mackey, uh, is the uh, Kate May Slayer because of a uh, kit that he saw while playing a game called Manhunter, some type of a, a little big kid's version of hide-and-seek. He sees a kid at the guy's house, and a few weeks later, he sees him on the back of a, mis uh, a milk carton that they used to have back in this time period. It's missing, and he saw the kid there, so he believes that he is the Cape May Slayer, so he convinces his friends, let's investigate him. <laughs> and they, uh, at first they reject his story, but then they uh, go on ahead and decide to go on ahead and help Davey. And, uh, investigate to see if is Ma uh, Wayne Mackey is actually the killer. And that's basically what the premise of this movie is about. <laughs> now, as I stated earlier, it seems like we're getting another one of these sub-genres, and this one is, uh, films that have an 80s feel to it. Now, this is actually set in the 80s. Um... And, uh, brings back a lot of memories of, of, uh, of the 80s. You know, whether it's not, and it's just not the horror movies for this particular film, but films uh, that came out during the 80s, like uh, The Goonies and Stand By Me. Yeah, this film seems to be a combination of the, those two films. We have the comedy of The Goonies and the drama of Stand By Me. And it seems like we, I've, we've seen this a lot in other films, whether it's actually set in the 80s or it's a film set in modern times, but it has an 80s feel to it. Now, you really have to give the filmmakers credit. They've really done a good job in the setting to make sure that everything looks, feels, and has a style uh, that was set back at, at this time period. You have the dress, the style, and the clothes, uh, the language of how the boys talk and everyone else talks. Uh, obviously, there was no, you know, no internet. There was no social media back then. You didn't have any cell phones or smartphones back then. <laughs> just imagine, uh, just looking back at the time, remembers that there wasn't even no flip phones or even cordless phones at the time back then. <laughs> it was, so you got to give the filmmakers credit on making this just looks like how it was back in the 80s. Now, what really drives this film is the, the acting of the four boys. Uh, they all do a pretty good job, uh, especially... Um, Especially uh, Graham, I'll probably pronounce his name wrong, uh, Versher as Davy Armstrong. Now, he he is known as a conspiracy, conspiracy theorist <laughs> uh, of the group. I mean, when you look at his bedroom, his bedroom is plastered full of all types of crazy stuff that a conspiracy theorist would think of, whether it's uh, uh, aliens in this one or this or that one, especially at that time, you know, where they really know really couldn't have, uh, there was no internet back then, 
So he's got a whole bunch of stuff from uh, tabloid pictures and uh, tabloid papers, a whole bunch of national inquiries or national uh, or any other tabloid, whether it was a talk or a national inquiry, all plastered through his room with all bunch of nonsense on it. Uh, but he really does a good job in showing his paranoia, but it, he plays it to where it actually sounds convincing, where he's not annoying or overly paranoid. So we really got to give Graham his uh, due diligence for playing David Armstrong. Yes, the kid is uh, a conspiracy theorist. Some of his theories are way out there, but he actually, with the way he talks, his mannerisms, makes you believe him. <laughs> No, also like all the other uh, actors that played the uh, the children in this film, we have uh, Judith Lewis as Tommy Eats Eaton. Uh, he's probably the well, the crazies out the bunch. Uh, he's a bit oversexed. Well, all the boys are. Uh, they kind of all of them oversexed. But this guy actually admits that he masturbates during which of them. He's not afraid to say it. Uh, but I also think it kind of hides, or he uses it as an escape because if his parents are very violent. Uh, we see throughout the uh, we see at some parts throughout the film, uh, we see him not wanting to go back home because his parents are busy fighting each other, and he tries to hide from it. He even has an older brother who has also been uh, also see that he has been affected by their parents' uh, abusive nature towards each other, and I guess towards them. Uh, then we have uh, Carl Ebry as uh, Dale Woody Woodsworth. He's the big guy, but he's sort of like a big gentle giant. Uh, he's definitely more concerned about his mother, uh, seems to be a single mother who works very hard, and he uh, basically just wants to make sure that she's okay, and he goes about his way to make sure his mother is fine. Then, of course, we have the nerd of the group, uh, Corey Gunther Andrew as Curtis Faraday. He's the nerd of the group. Now, you would think that him and Eats would be would not get along with each other, but even though he's a nerd, each respects them, and they all get along fine. And it's very uh, unusual that you would see a guy that looks like a bully uh, would get along with a guy that's a total nerd. But they all get along. <laughs> they're, all cra they're all crazy. Uh, but it's basically these actors and how well they get along with each other. That's what really drives the film. Now, while watching this film, uh, I got a lot of comparisons, not to Stranger Things, but more of it. Yeah, I did get that comparison, especially when uh, Nikki, David's former babysitter and current love interest, starts to join in their investigation. Uh, and uh, yeah, when she becomes part of the investigation, I like their, how they get along with each other. Uh, you can tell that he's very attracted to each other, but then again, you know, uh, she is kind of pretty. And uh, that's what guy boys did. He's a 15-year-old uh, boy who's going through puberty. <laughs> uh, he obviously wants to experience uh, some of the uh, fantasies that these boys have, and, but he actually respects Nikki, and when they talk crazy about her, he's the first one to defend her, and I really appreciate that, and I really like the relationship, but that's the comparisons that I got from this movie and It. Now, keep in mind that while It is also very serious, this is not really serious at point. There's a lot of humor between the boys. That's where we, I get comparisons to the Goonies with this particular film. There's a lot of jokes between the boys. There are very funny moments in the film. It's peppered with humor throughout the film. Uh, it's up until we get to the third act, and that's when the film gets dark, and I do mean dark. And I like how the uh, filmmakers actually just flipped the switch and made the whole film just go from a typical 180. We have this light part of this film. We're laughing at the boys who laugh at some of the stuff that they do, and they're actually sort of getting away with what they're doing. Uh, but eventually, uh, it's going to be sooner or later that it's going to catch up to them. I mean, there's simply no way in the world that a group of adolescent teenage boys are going to try to uh, investigate a serial killer and not have them pay for it. And I think that's what the filmmakers do when we get to the third act and the film just becomes totally dark and bad things do happen and the boys have to learn their lessons because yeah it's kind of fun and I'm pretty sure they're excited but you are chasing a serial killer and that bad things will happen and bad things do happen. I won't spoil it but I'm pretty sure the people who've seen this film know what I'm talking about. Now, just to give a fair warning to people, because, you know, even though this is 
made as a horror movie and people might think it is. It's really not really a horror movie, though it does have horror elements in it. It's more of a horror mystery. Uh, so if you're going in thinking about, oh yeah, I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch this great horror movie. You're not gonna get what you actually believe. So I'm just gonna give you a fair warning. Yes, there are horror elements in it. There are some nice little jump scares in it. Uh, there are some uh, tension in it, and like I said, we do have that third act. But this is more of a horror mystery. It's more of a who done it. Uh, kind of like uh, I would say, maybe like a. Uh, 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 updated version of the Goonies or kind of a little more darker version of Scooby-Doo if you really want to go that route <laughs> but you don't have the mask and you don't have the villain saying I would have gotten you if it wasn't for you meddling kids <laughs> oh trust me you don't get that here but I'm just saying that's what the vibe I got from this movie yes but overall I truly enjoyed the movie I liked the camaraderie between the four uh, the four boys I like the humor in it. Uh, I like the fact that uh, that the film gets serious at the end because, you know, in the long run, you are doing something very dangerous and, you know, eventually you might wind up, you know, paying, make a big mistake for it. And I like how the film begins and ends. It's kind of a, a kind of a 180 or a kind of a, like a little big wrap around how the film begins and how it ends. I truly really like that, especially the ending. So I gotta give the filmmakers credit for doing what they did. So I really do enjoy this movie, and I do recommend that you go see it. Just be careful, like I said, this is not the type of horror movie that you think it is. And if you go in here with that expectation, you probably will not like it. But I did enjoy it. So the horror mice is going to open up his vote. And I'm going to give the summer of '84. And a half out of my five gold coins. Yes, I'm going to get the summer of 84. Three and a half out of my five gold coins. I actually did enjoy this film. So I was uh, lucky enough to actually watch this on uh, Comcast On Demand. Uh, I believe it's playing at some, um, I don't think it got an actual theatrical release. It might be playing some film festivals. You might be able to watch on Amazon Prime or Netflix. I don't know if it's on available on those platforms yet. But if you do get a chance to see it, and if you did see it, what you think about it? Did you actually enjoy this type of a uh, film, or do you think it's another one of these uh, horror films are taking advantage <laughs> of the '80s and trying to relive it, and it just needs to stop? Uh, leave your comments down in your comment section below, and tell me what you thought about the summer of '84. Well, that's my video for today, guys. Hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up because it always helps the channel out a lot. And once again, this is your first time here. Please hit that subscriber button and ring that notification bell. That way you can come and enjoy the horror experience with me, the horror mice of money, G. And as always, all my social media links will be down in the description box below as well. Once again, my name is Lamont Smith, better known as the horror mice of money, G. And always remember... Rules. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Four, two,